Okay, I'm the closer right before lunch, and I'm just delighted to have the opportunity to tell you a little bit about how we're using nano flares developed here at Northwestern University by uh, Dr. Chad Merkin's lab with his collaborators. And we're really focused on studying cancer stem cell subpopulations. And I'm going to end by telling you how we're looking at combinatorial approaches in these specific subpopulations as an example of trying to create more efficacious cancer therapies. So I'd like to start by telling you that we're working with a number of different companies, but we have no personal financial gain. In fact, usually the way this works is uh, scientists ask companies for sponsored research uh, funding, and then if something exciting turns up, uh, this is where companies usually gain financially. So the overall goal is to tell you about the importance of tumor heterogeneity. A critical issue in designing efficient cancer therapies is really trying to understand the composition of these heterogeneous tumors in order to target cancer stem cell subpopulations that are generally considered drug resistant. And as you can see, if we just try to follow this yellow cancer stem cell subpopulation, starting from a primary tumor, you see just a minor subpopulation here. But over time, after first-line treatment therapy, when relapse occurs and metastasis, you see this very minor population becoming actually the majority of a metastasis. So the issue is, is that conventional therapies do not efficiently target cancer stem cells, particularly those that express an embryonic morphogen called nodal that I'd like to tell you a little bit about today. Cancer stem cells, as I said, form the minority subpopulation of these heterogeneous tumors, and they generally express these drug-resistant markers in addition to nodal. So the importance of trying to study these stem cell populations is really trying to benefit from the development of new molecular tools, such as nanoflares. The opportunity, then, is to develop new cancer interventions targeting these cancer stem cell signaling molecules, focusing on nodal in combination with frontline therapies. So when we introduced our original discovery um, in 2008, uh, telling everyone how aggressive tumor cells re-express an embryonic signaling pathway and a growth factor morphogen called nodal, there was no information in the literature about the importance of nodal, except during normal development. So we understand that nodal is an embryonic growth factor it belongs to the TGF-beta superfamily, and nodal signals by binding to a co-receptor complex composed of crypto-1 and active and lichinase receptors type 1 and type 2. And then this leads to the downstream signaling and phosphorylation of SMAD2 and SMAD3 in association with SMAD4, and then translocation to the nucleus. Well, what we've learned is that during early embryonic development, Nodal is quintessential in maintaining the pluripotency of human embryonic stem cells. So we have hypothesized that nodal being re-expressed in a tumor is very responsible for these cancer stem cell subpopulations and plasticity. While nodal has an exquisite inhibitor known as lefty during human embryonic development, when nodal is reactivated in aggressive tumor cells, we've discovered that lefty is methylated and silenced. So therefore, in tumor cells, nodal signaling underlies this cancer stem cell phenotype, unregulated tumor growth and metastasis, as well as resistance to conventional drugs. So we started our discovery journal by working with a number of individuals, including members of Dr. Powler's uh, pathology department, and using immunohistochemistry analysis, looking for a reddish-brown stain, we looked at a number of different cancers and found that nodal is associated with the late-stage melanoma and metastatic disease. It's associated with invasal ductal carcinoma 
in breast cancer as well as metastatic breast cancer. And then it's associated with increasing Gleason grades in prostate cancer, as well as a number of other cancer types. So nodal appears to be a valuable prognostic biomarker in many different cancers and an important new molecular target. So uh, for the last few years, we've been working with Italian collaborators, specifically protein engineers, to generate and characterize the first antinodal monoclonal antibody that is function blocking for tumor cells and to be used for a cancer therapy. So this antibody has been fully sequenced and is now undergoing humanization for the first clinical trial. But there's so much that we need to learn about which precise cells within a heterogeneous tumor actually produce nodal. So this function blocking antibody, we've shown that if we treat metastatic melanoma cells called C8161 cells, that it does block the expression of nodal by Western blot analysis. And also equally important, it blocks the downstream signaling of phosphosmad 2 and phosphomap kinase. So this is a function blocking, working uh, nodal antibody. And then the last piece of evidence I'll show you in this line of inquiry is that as proof of principle, we have used this function blocking antibody to deliver to animals that are bearing metastatic colonies within the lungs of mice. So we delivered these metastatic tumor cells, they lodged in the lung, lung colonies were allowed to establish, and then we delivered either the antinodal antibody to experimental lungs or a control IgG. And at the end of the experiment, you can see quite a difference here. The control lungs are just stippled with colonies and with tumors. And if we look here with light microscopy, we can see that all of these tumor and these tumor colonies are nodal expressing tumor cells, very positive. If we look at the antinodal treated lungs, they're very smooth, so they do not show these tumor colonies. And by light microscopy, we can see that these cells are apoptosing or dying. So this therapy looks to be very effective in targeting nodal expressing tumor cells. So now the challenge that we faced was trying to specifically study which subpopulations of these tumor cells express nodal. And this is the problem. Nodal is a secreted protein, so it's released from the cell. It can act in an autocrine manner, that means it can come back to the cell and induce more expression of nodal, so the cells keep multiplying, proliferating, or nodal can act on other cells in a paracrine manner and induce these cells to increase their tumor growth and metastasize. So it was very difficult then at that point to try to capture those cells that express nodal versus those cells where nodal was just stuck to the cell surface. By Western blot analysis that I showed you, we could only learn what the level of no nodal protein expression was in the tumor cell lysate, but not specifically which cells produced it. And then the immunohistochemistry that I showed you just uh, indicated where the nodal protein is localized, but not which cells were producing it at the gene level. So as shown here, here's the Western blot analysis. Here is nodal expression, just shown here by bands. Again, we don't know which cells are producing it, but we know it's associated with the aggressive melanoma phenotype, and it's not expressed in poorly metastatic cells. If we look with immunohistochemistry, all this brown staining for nodal in patients' melanoma tumors just says where the nodal is deposited. It doesn't tell you if this cell produced it and if this cell just has it stuck to the cell surface. So we started working with Merck Millipore. They licensed the NanoFlare technology uh, from Northwestern and uh, Dr. Merck and, and collaborators' laboratories. And specifically, Shad gave you a little overview of this, but we worked with them to create the first 
uh, nano flares or smart flares that would detect nodal gene expression in tumor cells. And just to remind you, um, there is a nano gold particle in the center here, and then there is a capture strand for your mRNA of interest, in our case it's nodal, and then there's a unique reporter strand. So that in the absence of a target, the probe does not fluoresce. When the probe enters the cell, finds its target gene or mRNA, then the capture strand binds the target and releases the reporter strand that has a fluorescent tag on it. So what's so simple about this technology is that you now can take live tumor cells, you can treat them with these smart flares or nano flares uh, that have your reporter sequence and your capture strand. These probes enter a cell, they then approach their target mRNA or gene, the probe binds to this target, and the flare releases for detection. So it is, ends up being detected in a fluorescence mode. And then, most importantly, the probe exits the cell so that you have live cell imaging and you can now capture the cell and look for nodal expression in relationship to many other markers for the first time. And so we were excited to try this technology. In our hands, we were interested in looking at tumor cells within a heterogeneous tumor that were either nodal negative, we wanted to know what their function was, or that they had low level expression for nodal versus cells that expressed high levels of expression of nodal. So using this technology, we could sort these cells essentially into different petri dishes or different bins to be able to do other biological assays on them. So in this manner, we could particularly look at a function that was directly related to nodal expression, not cells where nodal was just stuck to their cell surface. So we can perform live cell sorting. We can do confirmation by RT-PCR analysis. Again, Western block confirmation. We can perform biological assays, that's clonogenic assays and soft auger. And then we can look at tumorigenic potential in vivo. And of course, use confocal microscopy to image exactly where nodal MRN expression is occurring. So just uh, a few examples of how this works. We have a Psi-3, uh, and this is a green fluorescent probe, showing us where the nodal mRNA smart flare is localized within three different metastatic melanoma cell lines versus a non-aggressive cell line. So in the metastatic cells, you can see that many of them are fluorescing green, indicating specifically which cells are expressing this nodal gene versus cells that have very low level expression versus some cells that have no expression level for nodal because they're part of a heterogeneous group. And then we know that this technology works because looking at a very non-aggressive melanoma cell line, UACC cells, we see that there's no fluorescence within these cells. So this indicates that these probes are smart, uh, they know where to find this nodal gene, and then they are correctly indicating which cells are actually producing nodal. And of course, we have negative controls and positive uptake controls. Well, now we're able to isolate these nodal positive subpopulations, nodal high expressing cells versus nodal low expressing cells, and perform live cell experiments on them. We can validate, looking at the mRNA expression, that the nodal high expressing cells actually do have a high level of expression versus nodal low expressing. We can look at these same cells by Western blot analysis and verify that nodal low expressing cells have a lower level of expression than nodal high expressing cells. And then we be can begin to do biological assays where we look at three different metastatic melanoma cell lines for the differences in the ability of nodal high expressing cells versus nodal no expressing cells to form colonies in soft auger. So the first two pictures are showing us all these fluorescent colonies that have been formed by the nodal high expressing tumor cells versus fewer colonies that are formed 
by the nodal low expressing cells. So these are the kind of biological assays that can be performed. Um, also, we can take nodal high expressing cells, all of the cells expressing very high levels of this particular gene, and we can look at the expression of nodal shown here in green by confocal microscopy in relation to CD133, which is a prominent cancer stem cell associated marker. So CD133 is shown in each of these nodal expression cells as a red marker as a, again, compared to the green fluorescence of nodal. So this is the first time we've been able to look at live cells not only expressing nodal, but now learning that they also express this cancer stem cell marker CD133. And these data are always validated with another technique, which is very important. In this case, it's a Western blot analysis showing that nodal high expressing cells do express the CD133, and the unsorted control cells do not. Lastly, in this line of inquiry, we looked with fluorescence-activated cell sorter analysis, specifically looking for nodal expression in our metastatic melanoma cells, and now we look at it in relation to CD133, the cancer stem cell marker, and now for the first time we add ABCB5, which is a specific drug resistance marker. So we can now look at three different markers using this nanoflare technology and live cell sorting. So you can pinpoint those cells that are nodal expressing are also cancer stem cells that are also drug resistant. So a, a very important advancement in our field. Why is this important? Well, in the last two slides, I would tell you, and it was the genesis of my question to the previous speaker, can we learn a lot about the current therapies that are being used to treat metastatic melanoma and ask the question, are nodal expressing tumor cells actually targeted by current therapies? And I'll tell you the answer to that is no. So in these experiments, we are using a conventional therapy known as decarbazine, for short, DTIC. We've treated three different metastatic melanoma cell lines with increasing concentrations of DTIC. And in all of these residual cell populations that remain untouched or unaffected by DTIC, we can use this smart flare technology to show that at each concentration of DTIC that's used, there are nodal expressing tumor cells that remain completely unaffected. So this indicates to us that the most efficient therapy for these particular metastatic melanoma cells would be to use a combinatorial approach of DTIC plus antinodal antibody that's just been developed. And this shows us the greatest reduction in cell viability and the largest increase in apoptosis. So this combinatorial approach has been very helpful and advanced because of the smart flare technology. So studying tumor cell heterogeneity in cancer stem cell populations, we appreciate that conventional therapies do not target these cancer stem cells. We also bring to your attention this promising new target, nodal, that is reactivated in aggressive tumors. It underlies this stem cell phenotype, unregulated tumor growth and metastasis, and also is associated with drug resistance. And the smart flare technology originally developed here at Northwestern permitted us for the first time to actually isolate the tumor cell subpopulations that were expressing nodal and study them in relationship uh, to other markers. And I'll just leave you with this last slide with um, all of our wonderful collaborators. Thank you very much. <laughs>